This is a collection of many of the earliest pieces that we collected roughly between 1906. Um, that first piece that we collected is in the center box down there. Um, so we were collecting between like 1906 and these are some of the earliest pieces from like 1906 to 1923 that we collected. Uh, so landscape has always been a really big part of the CRMA's mission even before we were technically the CRMA. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, so as you can see, um, Impressionism was the art style du jour during this time. So we have a lot of Impressionist and Tonalist landscapes from this early period. Um, so landscape has been a part of our DNA for a very long time. Um, and of course, Grant Wood, our most famous artist, is known for his landscapes. Um, even before he started working in his mature style, it was something that he was drawn to. Here, of course, is Grant Wood's Imagination Isle, which is a project that he instituted for his art classes when he was teaching at McKinley. Uh, there's a small section of it above and then a great, uh, great picture of him working with his students below. But again, landscape is... Um, it's a very popular genre and has been really ever since it emerged in the 17th century um, Dutch Republic, which is where it really came into its own as a style. And I have a, oh gosh, a very long lecture on the history of landscape painting that I believe is hovering around somewhere on YouTube if people are interested. Um, Grant Wood, known as a landscape painter, that was a big part of his genre. Here are some early works where, again, he's working in that Impressionist style. Um, so Impressionism, of course, kind of came of age in France in the 1870s, and because it was centered there, it got to America a little bit later, it was brought back by American artists. So Grant Wood working in the 1920s here, um, this is a style that's like just starting to be edged out in America, but was still very popular. So Grant Wood does landscape through his entire career. So through this early Impressionist period, into his more mature style and even in works like um, Woman with Plants, which of course is of his mother, Hattie, um, we can see he has a really strong landscape element in it. And this is actually very common. Um, if you look at like Leonardo da Vinci's portraits of people, he also includes a very strong landscape element. Um, so it's a, a trope of very long genre. And some of Grant Wood's best known landscapes, I will throw in the caveat here that of these that we're looking at only young corn on the left here is in the museum right at this moment. So I don't want to tempt anyone thinking that Stone City Landscape or Arbor Day are, are just hanging around our museum and we're not putting them up. I just wanted to illustrate how prevalent landscape is in Grant Wood's oeuvre. Two of my favorites, of course, Arbor Day and Fall Plowing. So artists being inspired by the Midwestern landscape. Um, this is really what Grant Wood and Marvin Cohn brought to art history. Um, before these two artists were working, and I'll scoot back here just a bit. Um, the work on the right here is, of course, from one of Grant Wood and Marvin Cohn's trips, to, one of Grant Wood's trips to Paris during the 1920s. And until the regionalist artists like Wood and Cohn were working, artists thought that they needed to go to Europe and paint those great landscapes to have landscape art matter. And if, you know, if you couldn't get to Europe, you at least needed to be on the east coast of the United States. You know, you needed to be in a Gunquit, Maine or Skohegan, or you needed to be on an island somewhere, you know, off the coast of New England to have your landscape really be matter and have it be high class and quality. Uh, so Grant Wood and Marvin Cohn really rejected that. And they were very of the school that you needed to paint what surrounded you, you needed to paint the land that you knew. Um, and so that was, in my, in my opinion, that's always been one of their main contributions to the art historical narrative in American art, because, you know, they really centralized like, no, all landscapes are worthy of attention and the Midwestern landscape especially is evocative and wonderful and just as worthy of artistic attention as anything in Europe or on the East Coast. Uh, so I wanted to kind of center this exhibition in that both art historically and in our museum. And Marvin's River Bend number five is one of my favorites. So I always take the opportunity to put it up here. And so now I will transition to the five exhibitions specifically. Um, as these artists will attest to, they have been incredibly gracious as our timeline for this exhibition has changed several times due to COVID. It was pushed and pulled this way and that. So we have been talking about this exhibition for a while now. Oh, and I initially approached them all several years ago with this idea that we really wanted to center 
landscape. We wanted to look at Iowa artists who are creating versions of the landscape right now. And I so I believe we started this conversation in 2019, if I remember correctly, or maybe late 2018. I'd have to check emails. Um, but I have known all of these artists since I've been at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, which is six years, over six years now, which is wild to me. Um, and I have loved all of their work separately in their own milieu. But when I was putting this exhibition together, I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to look at a selection of artists who are all painting the same subject matter, but are doing it in really wildly divergent ways for both different media, different styles, um, and just kind of see the great breadth that you can get while still depicting the same, the same subject matter, which is always something that I find really fascinating. Um, so the artists that we chose are, of course, Nancy Lindsay. Nancy's work is up here in the upper left-hand corner. Marsha Wegman, whose beautiful pastel is in the center of the top row. Larry Zerbel, who's just to the right of Nancy. Mike Ryan, who's in the lower left-hand corner. And Al Sabin, who is in the lower right. Um, and as I said, I've known all of these artists for a really long time and admired their work separately. Um, so it was a really fun project for me to think about getting all five of them together. And thankfully, they were all very enthusiastic and wonderful about the project. Uh, so putting an exhibition like this together is a logistical challenge, obviously, because it involves selecting pieces um, where the artists might not have everything to hand or it might be different places or, you know, people might think of one thing later and want to sub something in. And then there's just logistics of getting everything to the museum, you know, getting all of our receipts made, storing everything until the exhibition. Um, and as I said, the dates for this exhibition change several times. And so luckily for me, all of these artists are infinitely professional and very organized and wonderful. And so working with them was such a pleasure. Um, and Larry Zerbel, as I said, unfortunately passed away before this exhibition came to fruition. Um, but he was aware of it and his lovely uh, wife Anne has been a wonderful person to work with. So she was able to supply us with all of Larry's works and stories about them. And we saw his studio. Um, Stan Wienerspan has been a really great resource for talking about Larry's work as he unfortunately isn't here to talk about it himself. And we, we surely miss him. Uh, so when I said that I wanted different, different media, so I wanted artists to work in, you know, different types of artistic media. So the three that we're seeing here are from left to right, Larry Zerbel, Nancy Lindsay, and Mike Ryan. Um, and they all work primarily in oils. Um, so these are just a couple of close-up snapshots of their work. Oil paint is really luminous and you can pile it on thick and get really cool effects with it. Um, so I knew that was a great part. And like I said, I've, I have loved all three of these artists for a long time. So it was really fun to do that. Um, but I wanted there to be a great balance. So we have these three who work in oils, but as we will see, they work in very different styles. Um, Larry is by far the most abstract artist that's in this exhibition. Um, Nancy, much more highly impressionistic. Um, she really varies the thickness of the paint. Mike Ryan, very expressionistic with an emphasis on like really bright opaque colors. Uh, and his color pairings are very deliberately done. So I thought, you know, even though these three artists are working in the same media, it's wonderful to see the different effects that you can get from oil paint um, and how differently they're interpreting the Iowa landscape. Uh, so Al Sabin is our watercolorist. Uh, I always describe watercolor as a very temperamental medium. Um, it is Oil paint is, in my opinion, a little bit more forgiving. You can come back to it. I feel like you can correct mistakes a little bit more easily. Um, so Al works in watercolor and he does it on canvas, which is unusual. Um, so he's gotten some different effects from doing watercolor on canvas than you do from working watercolor on paper, which is how it is traditionally done. Um, so Al was our watercolorist and Marsha is our pastelist. Uh, so she creates these wonderful, very photorealistic paintings photorealistic from a distance. They're delightfully tactile when you see them up close. Um, from pastels, if you're unfamiliar, I just threw in the picture of pastels to the left, to the right here, so you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about with those. Um, so we have this really wonderful balance of different media. And I also wanted there to be a really big uh, change in style. So I wanted to, you know, there's not one way to depict the landscape. You know, you don't have to you know, you don't have to do it any particular way. There are lots of ways to interpret the landscape. There are lots of ways to feel about it. 
Um, and so my biggest swing here was from Marsha Wegman, who, as I said, is very delicate and exacting, gets these wonderful effects from her pastels, uh, to Larry Zerbel, who is much more emotional and abstract and kind of captures the essence. Um, and I think Stan did a really wonderful job uh, talking about Larry's work in his presentation on it that, you know, Larry was really interpreting the feeling of the landscape and he had this wonderful palette of colors that he loved to use and pair interesting ones together. Um, and I had a lot of fun putting the exhibition together and going by colors and what felt good next to what, but it was a really wonderful challenge to put, you know, works like this that are so divergent um, next to each other and kind of see what narrative they came up with and what felt good next to what. Uh, and my three <coughs> um, varying levels of representation here, we have Nancy Lindsay in the upper left, Mike Ryan is on the right, and Al Sabin on the bottom left. Um, so these three artists, as I said, work in varying levels of representation where you can immediately tell that it is a landscape, you know, unlike um, Larry's and some of Al's even verge into abstraction. Um, but I, as I said, I loved pairing these together. The exhibition, if you have seen it, is hung, I guess we could say kind of chronologically. It's arranged by season. Um, and so we kind of start in one gallery with winter and all of these great scenes with snow and then go into spring, um, the rich greens of summer. And then there's a whole gallery that's all autumn scenes, which is my favorite. Um, it just feels very warm and cozy and wonderful to me. So I don't want to spoil the surprise for anyone who hasn't been in to see the exhibition yet. Um, but it was a really fun way to arrange the exhibition. Um, when I was first talking to these artists who were so gracious and some met with me several times and some we were able to do this in one or two visits. Um, you know, it was really fun to think about how I was going to arrange these works when they got on the wall, which is, of course, like, the curator's chance to be creative um, and briefly considered, you know, doing one gallery for each artist. But if you've been in our temporary galleries, you know, like that doesn't really work space wise. Um, our galleries are really porous. They're very organic. And so there isn't an easy here's where you start and here's where you stop for these uh, for these galleries. Um, and it's actually three separate galleries in this temporary space that we use. So for five artists, there wasn't really an even split. Um, and again, if you have seen these works in person, they are varying sizes. Um, some primarily work larger size, some primarily work smaller, some are all over the place. Um, so just geographically trying to split five artists amongst three galleries and have each artist have their own section just really wouldn't have worked in a way that I felt thought felt smooth or good. Um, and I always think it's much more interesting to let artworks talk to each other. I think it's really fun to see you know, very abstract works next to very representational ones. I think it's fun to see works with really thick paint like Nancy Lindsay's in the upper left hand corner um, against ones that are much thinner and translucent like Al Sabin's below. Um, and so arranging things kind of by season was a really fun way to be able to let these narratives emerge and see what paintings felt good next to each other and which ones were talking to each other. Um, and what kind of fun juxtapositions that could be made in such an exhibition. Um, so if you can come see it, oh goodness, I think, I just really like fall scenes, I can tell, because four of the five of these paintings that I've included here are, are from the Autumn Gallery. Um, so it was a really fun project. Um, all of the artists were so gracious with their time, and it was such a joy to go to each of their homes and see their studios where they worked. Um, in all of the YouTube chats that we've done with the artists, they've all talked a lot about their process, which is absolutely fascinating. Uh, you know, and so I have learned a lot that I didn't know. You know, I talked to Al Sabin and he like he talked about like being able to rub out his watercolor to kind of change the texture and make the canvas take even more watercolor than it usually would. So there's like an opacity to some of his works that you don't typically see in that genre. Um, you know, and Marsha was wonderful talking about how she gets like the extreme level of detail that you see in her beautiful pastels, but also how how comfortable she is changing things, which always impresses me. And um, as somebody who knows just enough about art to be terrified by it, I have worked with pastels. I don't think I'll ever have Marsha's confidence to just go in with the side of her hand and change something. 
Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing Nancy talk about, as we look at her work in the upper right hand here, uh, the wonderful juxtaposition of colors that she does, because this looks like such an autumn scene, but then you look really closely and you can see there are all these beautiful blues and purples and cool greens and other colors that you wouldn't necessarily associate with an autumn scene. Um, and I think Larry is make a really interesting juxtaposition to all of these. He works smaller scale than most of the other artists in the exhibition. Um, so integrating his work was really fun because I got to kind of challenge scale and group some of his together and create larger works out of smaller works, which was a really wonderful addition to the exhibition. Um, and Mike Ryan, whose work is in the lower right hand here, um, I just love his colors. I think they're so emotional and opaque and they just shimmer. And so I've always really loved all of these artists work. And so getting to put them all together was just a joy and seeing how they talked to each other and how they felt together. Uh, and I think it was a really wonderful celebration, both of, you know, these artists who are all spectacular in their professional way, but also uh, it tied in so nicely with what the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art does and has done for over 125 years now, I guess we're into 126. But it just felt like a really good time to do it. This was initially supposed to be an exhibition that we did in 2020, which of course was our 125th anniversary year. Um, but 2021 is actually the 175th anniversary of the founding of the state of Iowa. Um, so it's actually a really wonderful way to round out this year as well to celebrate the Iowa landscape by artists who are, you know, working right now and depicting it as it is. And it's a really wonderful legacy that we've had in this state and certainly in this museum for over a hundred years, which I think is really astounding. So thank you so much for joining us. It was such a treat to see everyone and get to talk about this exhibition. So if you have not seen it already, please come and visit us. It'll be up until January 16th. So it'll be up over the holidays and you can bring your families. Um, and as I said, if you have not um, seen our artist Zoom chats, definitely check those out on YouTube. So thank you all so much.